like to rank things. And so Judd is going to drive the pecking order this week on Mackie and Judd, presented in part by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Speaking of driving, they preach safe driving. In fact, they've got uh, all sorts of tips and tools on their website about how to be a better driver, how to be safer. How to, also, if you're a business that maybe has drivers that work for you, some things that you should probably be aware of and policies that you may need help writing up, you can find all sorts of, all sorts of tools and resources at federatedinsurance.com if you're a business owner and find out why they have been uh, the best in the industry for over 100 years. Federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. All right, what is this week's pecking order, Judd Zilgad? So with the with the Vikings starting with expectations, that I think that this could, could be a fun year. But I don't think there's, like, expectations of of a championship run, right? Like, I think it's just like, oh, okay, Cousins has a coach who will talk to him. That's always nice. <laughs> Um, my my list my list is going to be seasons that were probably the most fun because of the unexpected success that teams had. So so not like oh that team's going to be good they should win a ton and then they do. I'm talking about years where it just starts and you're like oh man it's going to be fun to watch the, you know the Vikings or the Twins or the Wolves or somebody and then they actually take a leap and surprise you. And just to be very clear. I'm going to leave out, because it's so obvious, the 87 and 91 Twins, because they are one and two, without a doubt. So I, yeah, I didn't yeah. include them, cause, just because, yes, in both cases, we didn't expect it. It was great. Um, if I was to include them, they would be one and two. And so I'm just going to give them a mention to start off with, and I'm going to start at the bottom of the list at 10. All right? Okay. All right, let's do uh, it. All right. Unexpected success. Right. Tie, there is a tenth place tie, so the only tie. Oh wow! Here. So we have eleven. We really have eleven. So we well, have, we have 11. thirteen because you're leaving off the two, like the two best. Yep. 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 Wow. All right. Very quickly, 2012 Vikings. If you recall, the 2011 Vikings had been three and thirteen and were a complete and utter disaster. In 2012, Peterson rushes for 2,000. 97 yards in the regular season. The Vikings go 10 and 6 and qualify for the playoffs, where, where of course Ponders hurt, Joe Webb plays, and they lose to the Packers in Green Bay. 2012 Vikings, it's not because they made a run, it's because they popped up after such a disastrous year and actually a, qualified for the playoffs. It was a surprise, and credit for the starting quarterback, Christian Ponder, for leading those Vikings into the playoffs. His December was great. That was the weirdest thing. Like they were, they were well for him. It, it was fantastic for him. For a good QB, not so much. But that December, he was really good for him. I mean, th- th- that's one of the to me. Th- that's one of the the best Minnesota sports myths is that Christian Ponder's December of 2012 was this magic carpet ride. No, Adrian Peterson was driving a Ferrari, and Christian Ponder was sitting in a car seat in the back seat. That's but what he happened got him in, in December. But he got, but he got him in. They here, got in. Here are the yards Christian Ponder threw for in December of that season: 119, 91, 131, 174. And then I will say, in Week 17, they beat the Packers 37-34 at home to get in, and he had his best game probably of his career. It was 234, three touchdowns, no interceptions. There you go. Now, Peterson also ran for like 200 yards in that game, yep. and they were playing off play action. But, yes, it was, the man it was, was a, a disaster. Fun, it was a fun ride. And then for one month, he was not, and then his career absolutely from there. And then, he, and then he washed his hair at a CVS. In a yeah, he was an idiot. Yeah. All right, uh, <laughs> the tie for 10th for t- place is the 2017 Twins. After going 59-103 and 103 and finishing 35 and a half games back in the AL Central uh, in 2016, they go 85-77 and 77 and lose in the one-game wildcard playoff after taking a lead in the first against the Yankees in the Bronx. <laughs> but much like the 2012 Vikes, the 2000. 2000- 17 Twins were a fun team coming off a disastrous year that actually provided some compelling content. Yeah, not great, not, not, but compelling. Not, not even the front office believed in that team. Oh. Yeah, and Paul was very upset about that. Yes. He was very upset about it. All right, number nine, 2019 Twins. Rocco Baldelli's team, his first year, when I think we all still were, were like, this guy's really good. And by the way, 
That team was fun. Uh, set the Major League home run record with 307. That team won 101 games, which I think is the second most in franchise history. I think the expectation for that team was, can they be competitive? And to come back and to put on the power display, and that was a fun team. And that, and that, unlike this team, in my opinion, was a likable team. 2019 Twins. Are yeah, they had they had an identity. They were fun. They hit the most home runs in franchise history. A lot to like about that team until October, and then yeah. they just decided well, that they weren't gonna they weren't gonna hit home runs anymore. Unfortunately, and they started R- Randy Dobnik in Game Two, which was also one of the stupidest things I've seen from a team that's done a lot of stupid things. All right, number eight on my list. 1988-89 Gopher men's basketball. Hmm. All right. Coming off a 4-14 and 14 Big Ten finish the previous year, the Gophers go 19-12, and 9-9 in the conference, and advance to the Sweet 16 in what was their first NCAA tournament appearance since 81-82. They beat Kansas State and Siena before they played Duke and lost. That team came out of nowhere. Like that program, I think two years before that, or three years, had been a complete mess. Is a it, complete mess. I think they've only been to the Sweet, even if you count like the years that got taken away, I think they've only been to the Sweet 16 maybe once since then? 1997? Yeah, and then that 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 team set up the team with Clem the next year that went to the Elite oh, okay. Eight okay. and lost. But that so team was, was supposed was to be good. Wrong. Yeah, but that team was supposed to be good this team, no expectations. And I will always say this, when golfer basketball is good, it is so much fun. This is very very much a basketball city that now produces NBA caliber players. I mean, it's it's a basketball hotbed and they just need they need something. And the, and the Timberwolves should I think the Timberwolves are going to provide a, a great atmosphere. The Gophers are still a long ways away. Unfortunately, tough. probably true. Yeah. Unfortunately true. All right, 2002 3 Gopher basketball again. Women this time. Mm-hmm. This team was a a the de- the definition of of a magic carpet ride. This program had been awful at points, like just awful. Nobody cared. Um, they they then in two thousand two made it to the second round as a fifth seed, and then this team seeded six beat Tulane and number three Stanford before going to the Sweet Sixteen and dropping the game to second-seeded Texas. That was then a springboard for the Final Four appearance with McCarville and Whalen the next year. But this was that brief time span where, where this program got good. I think this is around the time that they moved across the street from the pavilion into the barn and were actually drawing really well, really, really well. This team was a fun team, a likable team, and at the time, damn good. Yep, and it, and it launched you know twenty years of the Lindsey Whalen legend into you know a Lynx dynasty, and now she's obviously the coach. So that was that was when we were all sort of introduced to Lindsey Whalen for the first time, and now she's mm-hmm. I think on the Mount Rushmore in my lifetime, the Mount Rushmore of Minnesota sports figures. Hands down, that run to the Final Four, I and mean, I was like 11, 12 years old, was like one of the most fun I've ever had as a Minnesota sports fan watching that happen. I mean, the upset yes. against Duke in the Sweet 16 was obviously like kind of the cherry on top. Like, oh, this is actually something pretty damn special to get to the Final Four. I remember being like glued to the TV and also restaurants being absolutely at capacity, especially mm-hmm. for that Duke game and going forward. Like that was legitimately it's one of my best sports memories is watching those games with my dad. And that was an awesome run. It was incredible. Mm-hmm. Number six. Number six. They say this didn't happen, but they're wrong. It oh, did. And I God. say, hang the damn banner today. 96 97, play the Rouser, golfer, men's basketball team. This was one of the most fun I've I've had with sports oh, in okay. this I, town. I, I thought I thought the golfer basketball team disappeared for a few years there in the 90s. I don't 30, I don't 30, know what year you're talking about. 31 and 4, 16 and 2 in the Big Ten, and made it all the way to the Final Four as a top seed. Um, this was great. And and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the loss in the Final Four came to a pretty damn good Kentucky team. They beat Southwest Texas State, they beat Temple, they beat Clemson and UCLA in the Elite Eight. I don't, you can, you know what? 
just because a couple of papers got written for kids. And by the way, if you did that now, you don't get stripped of anything. All right. This was one of the most fun years. And I don't care what the stupid NCAA said. This existed. This was a great gopher basketball run. Yeah. What do they, if that happens now, they definitely, they'll hit you with some sort of scholarship penalty or like a, isn't it called like a, a show clause? Where the no, coach, a show cause is if you get in a cause. ton of trouble. But but here's the but I think five years back now, North Carolina had this exact thing, and the excuse was, well, they were helping kids throughout this class, including non basketball players, write papers, and so they said, well, if that's the case, if everybody cheats, you're not in trouble. Oh, because the whole class had cheated. Yes, help. Yes. So we need to go back and prove that. Other than that, that, like Quincy Lewis wasn't the only guy that had a paper written for him. Courtney right? James was not the only person in that class who who had help on, I believe, uh, d- doing an in depth paper on the menstruation cycle, which is what that paper was. What class was it? Women's studies or something? Biology, Biology? class of some sort? I don't know. The point is, give us back the damn banner. Mark, does Boyle, that, hang banner that banner still exist somewhere? Is that banner rolled I think up it's somewhere? in a back room. I, th- I think it does. I'm dead serious, too. It would be a great I think class, it's in the closet. Prank. If any young oh gophers God. are listening right now, if you are a senior at the U of M, find that banner, hang it in the middle of the night in Williams Arena. Make it NFT or something. It'd be hilarious. Why don't they just put it back up? The NCAA is a complete joke. We we know that now, right? What just if put you the ju- damn yeah, banner what, back yeah, up. What, what if you just put it up? What would the yeah, NCAA do? <laughs> and I would have a night, and I would bring back Clem, and I would bring back players, and I would say, we're going to rectify the mistake. And the mistake was believing that school was important, because all that was important that year was the basketball team. There was a, there was a time where St. Cloud State stripped homecoming. We didn't have homecoming for years, because things got out of control <laughs> right before I got there. So they replaced homecoming with what was called Welcome Week. Welcome Week for parents and alumni to come back like mid-October. Essentially homecoming, just named something difference? completely different. It's not, but Welcome Week would apply to this go for football. It, it's uh, it's yeah. some type of welcome celebration. Yeah. It's not honoring them, it, but it, it's it's backdooring your way, still doing the same damn thing. Yep. Clem, come back, and then we'll get that banner and we'll raise yeah, it we, to the we raft. It belongs just up there. Disowned Clem Haskins, the greatest coach in go for basketball history, because a couple kids had papers written for him you know? for a cheating scandal. Ridiculous. For mm. a che- un- unless you do something illegal, I don't want to hear about it. Like if if you're a criminal. <laughs> You, then you know what? Punish that person, that that coach. But my God, Clem! You know what Clem did here? Like th- this program was in disarray. He did a fantastic job. Who cares if the kids went to school? Amen. That's drives me crazy. All right, next on my list, the 2002 Twins. Where are we at? Team, number, was this number five? Five. Yep. Okay. 2002 Twins, ten year playoff drought. Um, the Twins th- then go with with Gardenhire in his first year. In the dugout, 94 and 67. They finish in first place. And then, most importantly, probably, they actually win. Hold on. F- wait for it, Twins fans, especially you young kids. They win a playoff series. That means they won not only one game, but more games <laughs> than, than their opponent. And and that team then lost in the ALCS to the Angels in five. That team also had a 23-year-old Johan Santana went eight and six, two ninety nine ERA, twenty seven games, fourteen starts. Tory okay, Hunter had twenty nine home runs. We're gonna do this. Ortiz again. had twenty. David Ortiz, I forgot about that. They cut a guy who had twenty home runs a couple of years before that. Anyway, the Twins, two thousand two. And I don't want to spoil the rest of your list, but I don't. I didn't find that season to be particularly shocking. Maybe it was the run, the fact that they beat they beat the A's and then they went to the ALCS. That was. That team was up big uh, with Kelly in his last year in 2001, up big in what, July, but then completely fell apart. Yeah. I don't want to spoil the rest of your list because I have have more takes on this, but let's keep going here. All right. Next one, 2002, three wild. Wild. Um, Third year expansion team makes the playoffs for the first time, which is awesome. That's great. They're playing the Avs. Everyone's like, well, they're going to be done in like four games, right? They come back from 3-1 to beat the Avs. They come back from 3-1 to beat the Canucks. They finally go out, but it's in the Western Conference Finals. So the 2002-3 Jacques Lemaire neutral zone trapping. We don't care if the game's attractive because we're going to win hockey games. That team is next on my list. All right. 
Now I'm down to the final... Oh, I'm sorry. That was number four. So now I'm down to the final three. All right? The third team, the 9091 North Stars. This mm. team, for mm-hmm. lack of a better term, sucked. <laughs> they finished 38 points behind Chicago. So Chicago They were won. below 500, right? They were awful. They were 38 points back of the first place team in their division. That's... And 37 points back of the second place team. And yet they beat both of those teams and Edmonton and made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. That was a fun run, but that was as unexpected as it possibly gets. Yeah. No, that's uh, the NHL. It's funny because I think it was like, didn't two thirds of the teams get into the playoffs during that time in the NHL? Yeah. Or something absurd. 16 out of, I think, was that still, a, I think that was still the 21 team league. So, yes, 16 to 21. <laughs> so just, everybody Got in for just a long gets time. in. <laughs> yeah, basically. And if you get hot, you get a goalie that stands on his head. You can get a below 500 team that makes makes a run. John That's Casey, right. man. John mm-hmm. Casey. All right, number two, 2017 Vikings. Um, that team, I don't think it's that we thought that team was going to be bad, but Bradford gets hurt in the week one win against the Saints. And now, starting in week two, you put in Case Keenum. And if I'm not mistaken, week two was against the Steelers in Pittsburgh, and they lost, and you're like, oh, my God, this is going to be brutal. (laughs) That is, I think that that was, in recent history, Vikings-wise, as fun of a magic carpet ride run for a Vikings team as I, I can recall, I know it, it ended in, di- in disappointment, but I still refuse to equate the disappointment of being blown out by the Eagles in the conference title game with the with the certainly 98 loss to the Falcons in the um, championship game and then the conference championship loss to the Saints. I still regard 2017, despite the disappointment, as a fun year and really the last year in which Zim was Zim. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, yes, I agree with this. I mean, the whole thing was Magic Carpet Ride Central. That's that's probably the most shockingly, I think we thought the Vikings would be competitive, but for them to be that good was was very far-fetched, especially with the quarterback situation. So, yeah, I, I agree with the placement of the season. Mm-hmm. All right, and atop my list, because this is the first time that young Judd saw a team and, and was fully cognizant of a team making a run in this godforsaken sports town to a championship series of any sort, 80-81 North Stars. All right? So here's what made this improbable but fun. The North Stars played Boston in the first round. Going into that series over the f- the first 14 seasons of this franchise's existence, the North Stars had been 0-28-7 in Boston Guard. They won game one in overtime. Uh, that was then a best three of five. They swept it in three. They went through Boston, Buffalo, and Calgary but before they obviously collided with the Islanders, who were a great team, and beat them. But that was my first personal taste of a run to a championship. Um, And largely, I think, in many ways, shaped me as a sports fan. Because you get a taste, and it's like, oh boy, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. Shaped you as a man. So the 80-81... Shaped you as a boy. Exactly right. The (laughs) 80-81 North Stars uh, are atop my list. The 2017 Vikings are next. And then my third is the 90... 91 North Stars. The difference between those two teams is that is the team that went in 81 um, was like on the ascent. So it it was surprising, but that team was getting good in 91. I mean, that team was awful for much of that year. And I don't know how Phil's probably right. Hot goaltender, etc. But the fact that they got through was probably a, a much bigger surprise in some ways. Yeah. It's a pretty good list. That's a pretty good, pretty good pecking order right there. Very so subjective. Two two snubs that I would like to point out. I would actually swap Absolutely. the 2020, the 2002 twins for the 2001 twins. I know the 2002 twins went further because mm-hmm. they the two the 2002 twins went to the ALCS, but mm-hmm. the 2001 twins nobody thought they were going to be good. I mean, it was like a decade of 90 lost seasons. You know, leading up to that season, it was 93 losses, 97, 92, 94. 
they had a, a they had a, a strike shortened season in '95 in which they were tracking toward a hundred losses. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a good one. They had a 91 loss season in 2000 in 1993. And they built this huge division lead in the first couple months of the season. And it was all these new young guys, Minkiewicz and Pierzynski and Koski and Torrey Hunter, Jock Jones. And then they faded in September. But that season to me was so much fun. And it just, it ushered in a new generation of Twins fans, myself included, Mm -hmm. and all of my high school friends. And then the other season I would throw out there is the 2019 P.J. Fleck Gophers they um, they were coming off a seven and six season. They won their first nine games to jump to seventh in the country after they beat Penn State at home. Mm-hmm. And they wind up paying it off with an 11 and two record and a win over Auburn in the Outback Bowl on I think it was a New Year's Day. yep That's January a good one first 2020. yep. so they they weren't exp- they were expected to be competitive, but I don't think anyone expected them to to go 11 and two and beat Auburn in the Outback Bowl. Yeah, so I would throw that one on the That's a great consideration one. too. Yeah. I like it. So there you go, championship nice packing card. Good stuff. Nice little history lesson too, because like, there's probably a, a good amount of our YouTube audience, uh, especially who are like under 25, who are that North have stars? no idea of those at least like four <laughs> yeah. of those seasons ever existed. Yep, it's Nothing amazing. Like yeah, it. it's like the further you go with Minnesota sports, you start looking back, like God, was it really that long ago that this happened? Yes, probably. <laughs> Almost certainly. well, and chat. And and just runs like that are just so much fun. Yep. We always, it's like with our winter sports teams too, you get, you get through this long grind of a season, 82 games, and all right, all right, all right, wild, let's go. Come on, let's, uh, this is the year, it's going to happen. And no, <laughs> right. it doesn't happen. Or uh, or twins, all right, here we go. We're going to we're gonna get through it this time. Nope. Yep. So, well, well, we always have golf too. We can always head down to the Meadows at Mystic if we are yes. looking for a pick-me-up from our Minnesota sports failures. Yeah, it's uh, it's fall golf time, baby. Fall golf time. You can get in uh, 18 holes. You can play 27 like I did on Friday, and you may as well do it all at the Meadows at Mystic Lake, an award-winning 18-hole public golf course. You can book your tee time now at golfthemeadows.com to learn more. Full-service golf shop. They have a great little patio, too, to enjoy a nice cold one before or after, if not both of your rounds. Right, Book your tee time now at golfthemeadows.com. All right, dudes, that's a wrap on today's Mackie and Judd. Over on Purple Daily, we picked the Vikings schedule today. So come go find out how many how many wins we all have the Vikings on officially going into 2022. Tomorrow, write that down, predictions and an accountability session. And then Sunday, Vikings Vent Line on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. See you guys.